Joe the Gray Wizard. This one time, there was a friend of mine. His name was Joe the Gray Wizard. Now, Joe wasn't really a wizard per se. He was more of a warlock because he practiced the Wiccan belief. And what he was most known for amongst our crew was empowering stones. He could basically take any kind of stone and bestow it with luck or protection or love and then you would gain that benefit along those lines as long as you held those stones in your possession. And that's basically what Joe the Great Wizard was known for. Now, this one incident happened uh, that I'll never forget. And again, it was one of those things that, you know, people would probably dismiss, uh, you know, at some point, like if they seen it, you know, they might be astonished by it at first, but then as time went on, they would probably just dismiss it out of their mind. But I'll, I'll never forget this moment. And, you know, like retelling it, it might not sound that fantastical, but it was, it, it really did amaze me when it happened, when it happened, when it happened, when it happened, when it happened. All right, we used to go to uh, Chicago uh, once a year to this uh, this arcade. It was a virtual reality arcade called the Battletech Simulator. And now like, you know, I'd go down there with a group of my friends and we'd usually spend a weekend down there. Now anybody that's ever been to Chicago, they know that it's incredibly windy. Like, you know, um, at certain parts of the year, you know, they don't call it the Windy City for nothing. And this particular time was in winter time. And uh, where we parked our car was like about quarter mile away from where this arcade was because it was in the middle of the downtown area. You know, it was the parking was always for shit. Anyway, we parked our car and we walked to the virtual reality arcade. And as we're walking, there's this incredible like biting wind. It was crazy cold and just like blasting you in the face, you know, and, it, and you know, there was a really strong force to it to the point where it was uncomfortable. You know what I mean? It was the kind of shit that caused your your eyes to water and then, and then they would just like freeze, you know what I mean? Because it was so fucking cold at the same time. So anyway, we go to the arcade, you know, we went to the arcade this one particular day and, you know, we got our, uh, our gaming in and when we were leaving it was nighttime so it was even colder and most of my friends were walking up front and me and joe the gray wizard we were about a block behind and we were walking and this wind was just non-stop blasting in one direction right into our faces i looked at joe the gray wizard and i said man i wish this fucking wind would stop you know and as soon as I said that, he looked over at me and he bowed his head as we were walking forward, like pushing into this wind. And he extended his hand out in a stopping motion. So here he is walking, bowing his head in deep concentration, like looking down, not, not really looking at anything because he had his eyes closed, but in deep concentration. And he was holding his hand out in front of himself, right? All of a sudden, this wind that had been blowing for hours, you know what I mean, nonstop, suddenly stopped. And not only did it stop, but all of a sudden I felt like a gentle pushing of this wind behind us. You know what I mean? The whole time it was blowing in one direction, which was like straight onto us as we were walking. And all of a sudden, the wind was like gently pushing us from the back. It was almost like the wind was wrapping itself around a shield that was in front of us and like curling into the back, you know what I mean? Like curling into the back around the shield. And I looked at Joe <laughs> as I was walking and I couldn't believe what was happening. And when we got back to the vehicle, I wouldn't let it go, man. I was like, Joe, how the fuck do you do that, man? You stop the fucking wind. Are you serious right now? I was like, how do you have these powers? You know what I mean? And he just looked, you know, he was all, he was a real humble dude. You know what I'm saying? He just kind of looked and smiled. You know, like he would never tell anybody anything about his magical powers or how he went about uh, changing the world. That always stuck with me, and even years later, I would ask him, 
You know, Joe, man, when are you going to tell me how you stop that fucking win, man? This Joe the Great Wizard, I had, uh, you know, I was friends with him for, for many years. And there was another incident that happened where we were actually uh, playing a game of Morton's List. Now, Morton's List is a game that basically you roll randomly on this table and it gives you a random activity, something to do, you know, and all the activities are basically something that someone would do for fun. Anyway, we happen to roll sands. And we happen to be playing the game with Joe the Grey Wizard. You know, so we, we talked about it and we decided that we were gonna hold the seance right at Psychopathic Records, like right at the office. And Joe the Grey Wizard, who was very versed in seances, would actually conduct it. So we were like, all right, cool. So we went there, we basically got all the stuff we needed. We got four candles, they were brand new candles. Um, and he, he needed a, a sheet of glass you know which we got and so the glass was he explained it was going to be the gateway into the spiritual realm and so then we conducted the seance and we were trying to reach a really good friend of mine who passed away in high school he, he actually committed suicide his name was kenny veach and this was a, a a really good friend of mine like i've tried to reach him in several different seances throughout my life all through middle school, I hung real tight with this kid like every day, you know, without fail. Uh, and then when we went into high schools, he actually moved away and we kind of separated anyway. He committed suicide and when they found his body, he was actually in his garage, you know, he kept the car running, you know, to kill himself. And when they found his body, he was actually in the garage with his body stretched out toward the door leading out of the garage. Like he, he, he had changed his mind last minute and he didn't want to commit suicide, but it was too late. He, he passed before he got to the door. Anyway, so we, you know, we decided we were going to try to contact Kenny Veach, you know, because I always, I always felt like I never got closure, you know, with him. And so like that was, you know, when it was brought up, who should we try to reach? You know, that's who I wanted to bring up because like I felt like if we can somehow you know, come in contact with him, I would like to have my final words with them. So anyway, we were conducting the seance and Joe the Great Wizard, like when he did seances, he would always begin it with open the gate, you know, and he explained it, seances are dangerous because when, whenever you do a seance, you have to open a gate. The problem is with opening a gate is you never know who's gonna come through that gate. And he explained that the glass was a representation of that gate, but it also allowed him to peer into the other side so he could see what was about to come through the gate. You know, it, it, using his, uh, his warlock abilities, he was able to perceive the spiritual realm, at least, you know, a part of the spiritual realm by use of the sheet of glass. So anyway, we were, we were holding the seance and we were trying to reach Kenny Beach and he opened the gate and you know he, he warned us all like before we even did it you know this could be something that might get fucked up <laughs> you know what I mean so by opening the gate you never know what's going to come through so we started doing the seance at one point we asked for a sign and just as he asked for a sign that there was a spirits like close at hand you know, they could assist us in finding Kenny Veach. We heard a heavy thump on the roof of the building. So we all looked up and we were like, you know, kind of like, whoa, that was fucked up, you know? We were kind of looking around at each other and we heard the thump again. So then we were like, is this fucking real? You know what I mean? No, it's probably just like something weird. Even though we didn't hear no thump at all the rest of the time. So then, he asked the spirits to help us to find Kenny Veach. So he looked down and he said, can we get another sign? And as he was saying that, on the table there were those four candles. Now each candle was casting a perfect shadow because they were all brand new candles. And this shadow was like around the base of the candle 
and it probably extended out about two inches. Anyway, as he asked for the second sign, all of a sudden, one of the shadows on the candle begins expanding across the table. <laughs> and we were like, I, I think I was the first one to notice it. I was like, whoa, look at that shadow. And it was just creeping, growing. Then it was three inches, then it was four inches. All of a sudden it was about like seven or eight inches expanding across the table. As if it was like a, I don't even fucking know how to explain it. But it was one of those things where it just flipped your mind. Like you're looking at it and you're not even, it's, your mind is having a hard time processing what you're seeing. Because it's something that's just, it's breaking the rules of this world. Like it's just not, it's not supposed to be happening. So. As it dawned upon everyone what was going on as the shadow was expanding across the table, all of a sudden, Joe the Grey Wizard, he looked out at the mirror and we looked over at him and you just see this look of complete terror on his face. Just complete and utter terror. And then he said, close the gate, close the gate, close the gate. Like he screamed it out. And then we're like, all of a sudden, boom, the shadow went back to normal. The thumping on the roof stopped. And we're all looking around like, what the fuck happened, man? Like, what, what's going on, you know? And Joe said that he's seen some sort of demonic form that was coming through the glass. And he said that it was wolf-like in nature. The way he described it was, it, it was, it was a wolf type demonic creature that was trying to break its way up through the glass to get out into our world. And he was able to, at the last minute, he was able to close the gate to keep it from entering our world. Part of the reason that I wanted to tell you the wind story is because I want you to know that Joe the great wizard, he was not prone to like bullshit stories or, you know, he wasn't into the displays of his abilities or his powers. So I never questioned his abilities and like his stones that he gave out and that he empowered. Like I always took them as if they were gold. You know what I mean? Because I knew that in some way, somehow, he was able to actually utilize real and true magic, you know, to affect, you know what I mean? To affect this world, 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 world. world.